Shalom, greetings, Rastafari. I know we've touched on this before. Um, I am Wendem Yadin, Rasi Adinos Tefari, of the Lineage of the Society of the Imperial Majesty. I know we've um, we've touched on this subject matter before. I don't think we've exclusively really honed in on it or focused on it like we would like to um, due to other priorities in the ministry such as this particular holy day and such as the Torah portion readings and the teachings of His Imperial Majesty and the building of our community on the local level, on the global level and international level as well. Therefore, we're going to take this moment to touch on this particular issue and basically, <clears throat> without much ado, we want to make it clear, make no mistake about it, that every day we're hearing more and more about the, um, the economy. And we're hearing all these debates in the media about who's to blame and why and how come and what can we do and now because we're in a political uh, season of uh, re-election, we're getting the Republican and Democrat debating about, well, who's to blame? Is it Obama? Obama hasn't done this and that, and he said, you're going to do this. And others say, well, we know what the answer is, and when we come to Washington, what we're going to do. And it's, it's a little bit amazing, not very, after you begin to understand the underpinnings of the system, the, the systemic um, structure of the system, it doesn't become really so amazing. It is almost predictive that this is going to happen or that this is how the media or the system is going to respond to this. It's not so surprising. Those of us who still get surprised in this system, we're not very mature if we're getting surprised at the system of things. That means either we don't know, we're not very educated, or we don't want to accept. Often it's the fact that ones don't want to accept what's the truth and what's so obvious and, and blatantly clear, and we prefer to make excuses or make believe or blame, play the blame game. It's not this, but it's that, it's not me, but it's them, so forth and so on. But when we're speaking about economics, and economics I think is a, is a very significant and a very important issue, especially to us as the once lost but now found Beta is Araya, especially as this Ethiopian Hebrew commonwealth and this black Jewish or black Hebrew idea that many of us have embraced, but perhaps we articulate it differently. Um, as we mentioned before, there's this particular book, which is an excellent book, We the Black Jews. We the Black Jews. Um, there's also The Black Jews of Harlem. We've touched on that book, um, which mainly focuses on one of the, one of the first um, foundational black Hebrew, Ethiopian Hebrew communities or African American Hebrew communities um, and that was the Commandment Keepers Congregation and we've heard recently sadly that um, there's been some infighting and, and, and divide and conquer strategy that has crept in recently amongst that particular congregation and the historical site has been lost. We pray for them but we do understand the so-called COINTELPRO to stop the rise of a black messiah. And we have to be, we have to be conscious of that. In fact, it's, it's nothing new. In fact, Hwariya Paulos told us and the first century um, apostles told us about the many antichrist, those who would seek to stop the rise of the black messiah. But on this economics issue, when we're talking about, let's put this up, we're, hopefully we'll get into that a little more as we proceed with other and related teachings. 
Slave trade. Let's just touch on the slave trade and the economics vis-a-vis -vis America and vis-a-vis -vis this particular time right now. Why is the U.S., the United States of America, the corporation and the people in the country and all that, why is the U.S. and why are the Western economies in particular, or, or we can call it the global thing, but see the whole global thing is based on the American thing. So if we see a, a downturn in the global economy or the global economy is being adversely affected, it is because they're all plugged into the system. Biblically speaking, they're all living in the image of the beast. It's like there's a recent um, case about, I think she's Pakistani or Bangladeshi or something like that, and her mother brought her into the country, and now immigration is talking about, well, they want to send her back, so forth and so on. And we basically say um, she should stay. But she violated, and um, she broke the law, plain and simple. She, you know, was it now? There's like a new normal. Now it's like everybody should come to America, and be able to live the so-called American dream. In fact, Tavis Smiley, and we want to get on some, um, some reasonings, debates, and 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 to address a lot of what Tavis Smiley is putting out recently, and not just recently, but. More recently, because of the whole poverty tour, and he had, um, I think we saw the program, we had Van Jones on recently, and um, Maxine Waters on the Tavis Smiley show, and it was talking about um, the double-digit inflation and, and how it's adversely affecting black people. And we're beginning to see this, especially black males, and we're beginning to see the first bad fruit, let us call it, of this double-digit inflation. I mean, in the number of, even over this recent uh, Rosh Hashanah and, and fall festival season, we've had some opportunity to check up on the news and, and you know, see, well, okay, what's going on, just get a basic idea and the number of shootings by black males, the number of killings by black males, um, and the other violence by black males, but also some females too. We can't leave the females out of it. Some females are thugged out too, so they're doing some stuff too as well. But there are what we call it quality of life crimes, economic crimes, the pressures that it already puts on an already lost people. So why do we have this situation? What is really the cause? And, and then how can this change? Of course, Obama, he's up for, he's running for re-election. And he's, of course, made promises. And people say, well, he's a black president. What's he doing about black people? And a lot of our people are ignorant. Let me say ignorant or ignorant. They don't really understand the system that they're living in. And, and we all know that black people, that we were brought over here, or we came to America in, in a vastly different, under different um, circumstances than every other people. And this makes us unique, that black people in the Americas and the Caribbean came under here or came over here not like... Um, any other group, like, like for example, let's look at the, the, the Europeans or the Anglo-Americans. When they came over here, they basically came over here. Originally, it was a charter that they had received, I think, from England or King George, so forth and so on, to come over here and to colonize this. So their only authority was from their own people in another country that really had no rights to this so-called new land over here. And then when they got set up, when the so-called founding fathers got set up and they started to recognize that this place, America, is wealthy and rich and valuable, they, they didn't want to pay taxes to England. Now, of course, this story is spun and leads to the American Revolution, so forth and so on, because they broke away, they wanted freedom and so forth. And, so on. and people just eat it up. You know, in their ignorance, they just eat this sort of story up. 
But it's interesting and ironic that white males, what they call so-called rich, white, gentry, land-holding, slave-holding, and that is the real reason. That is the real reason why there is such a devastating and stagnation in the global economy as well as a downturn in the United States economy overall. You see, because there was something called reconstruction. I know some folks say, oh, you're going too far back there. We just want to move forward. Well, you can't move forward right, in a progressive way and not recognize what preceded or what occurred previously. And this has been the problem, functioning illiterates or functioning ignorance, and functioning in ignorance. We're going to declare this and hopefully go into this point about um, the slave trade curse or the, or, or the curse of slavery. The U.S. and the West, speaking about the Western economies, in particular England, but the EU and Europe, are suffering this economic crisis. And this is one of the curses for slavery, one of the curses of the slave trade. And, and, and why is this? Well, we, we still have something up here interesting since we're still in the season. And there's a reason for this particular Rosh Hashanah season. And once again, brothers and sisters, um, in the Hebrew, Shana Toba, Shana Toba, which is to um, say, have a good new year. And may you be inscribed in the book of life as well, L'chaim, L'chaim, to life. Now, Israel is the son, the son called out of Egypt, the black land, we know that, but Israel, the son, is a corporate man or the true black man, right? And so we need to understand that the enslavement of Israel, even even as the lost sheep of Israel. See, that, that was a dispensation. Deuteronomy, recently in our Torah portion, reading and feedings, we touched on Deuteronomy chapter 28. And those of us who are studying and those of you who have been studying with us hopefully have also touched on that portion. And we've mentioned these books um, repeatedly, and we will continue to because we don't know if some are watching this for the first time and want to know, well, where do we get off? I mean, how come we call ourselves Israelites and Hebrews and black Jews? And uh, I don't believe that. Well, you really don't have to believe that. We're not asking to believe that. But do you know otherwise? You know what I mean? Do you know any facts that contradict our truth? And if you don't, well, as one would say, you should check it out. And those who are a little more negative will just tell you to shut up and to check it out. You understand? But if you don't want to, you can go elsewhere. But these particular books right here, From Babylon to Timbuktu and Valley of the Dry Bones, we said that this book in particular, which says as a subtitle, The Conditions That Face Black People in America is Excellent. Tavis Smiley, you really should check this out. I don't know if you're up to it yet or whether situations. What's happening is that situations are becoming so dire, so dreadful, so bad, that ones, especially black folks and lost sheep, are so desperate that some of them are going to begin to check out, since they've been checking out all these other, other pseudo-solutions and they're not working out. Some of them might finally return to their truth and return to our truth concerning who we really are, where we're really from, how we came over here, you understand, know and what the big picture is all about as well as this particular book, which I think touches on the black people's condition and situation in America even and especially today. But there's a curse, not just the curse that was on us as the lost sheep, because we refuse to do the will of Yahweh, El Elohe Israel, our God, 
and we also rejected the Moshiach, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, nearly 2,000 years ago. This is who this people over here in the Americas and the Caribbean really are. And even though many do not want to accept that and reject that, this is the reality. And when we explain and deal with the facts and the factors, everything lines up. It all lines up. It all explains everything, to, fro, up, down, east, west, north, south. The whole picture is clear from the informed scriptural perspective. So there's a curse. We call it the slave trade curse or the curse of, of slavery. And this is the major reason for the bad economic situation in America, vis-a-vis -vis America, um, and of course with the slavery, the slave trade curse, we're not talking about the racism and segregation and discrimination and all of these are the byproducts that we can trace from that, but there's a curse for the slave trade and enslavement of God's people and also a curse on the lost sheep of God's people who don't want to recognize that reality. Now, when we're turning on the news, we're hearing it's, it's crazy right now, this particular season right here. It seems like there is an increase in what they call so-called black-on-black violence, which you call lost sheep-on-lost sheep violence that's happening, where black men, young black men are killing Young black men, young black men are killing old black men, old black men are killing young black men, black men are killing women, women are killing other women, women are killing black men. I mean, there is an, a whole implosion that's going on because most of these folks are lost. They do not have even an inkling of who they are, where they're from, why we're in this situation. And no one is telling them. They're not finding this truth of God and Christ, the true gospel being taught in the churches. All they hear from these illegal Jehovah worships you know, is a falsified so-called pseudo-gospel called a prosperity gospel that has nothing to do with the true message of the Bible for this people, especially in this particular time. Now, with that being said, we want to move on to a connective issue. There's, there's another issue that's connected with that, but we wanted just to put up another, because we've been trying to put out this message, um, especially to our people in particular, to the law sheep, but moreover as a witness to the whole world to the entire world, that this whole economic situation that we're witnessing has everything to do with the lost sheep of the house of Israel, with so-called black people who are enslaved in America and the Caribbean. Now, this does not say that because the black people are the bait to Israel, this means that they are all right and exact and everything is perfect and they are somehow just righteous because of that identification. No, this just points out, well, who's who? on the face of the planet Earth. And then when we connect that reality of who's who and who black people are, then it becomes more clear to us why we're witnessing what we are witnessing, everything from the so-called black-on-black violence, everything from the sagging pants. You know what I mean? If we want to talk about the sagging Pants and the destruction of, 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 of black boys and the destruction of the black community and the degradation of the black woman and the whole degeneration of this generation has everything to do with who they are and with their lost condition. You know it's a God problem that the lost sheep have. It's a God problem, but more than a, it's a God problem initially, because they turned, our ancestors turned our backs on God. You know what I'm saying? We turned our backs on our God, on the God of the covenant. You know what I'm saying? We rejected the Moshiach, our black Lord and Savior, as one of us. But we would accept Caesar. We have no king but Caesar. You remember the people saying that? I know you thought it was some white Jews. 
But the white Jews or the European Jews are not the original Jews. And some of them, even some of the white Jews, are, become, are coming to the, the um, knowledge and recognition of that fact themselves. You see, and it's going to come to the time, the point in time, when, when so-called white Jews have to acknowledge that. And see, when the so-called white Jews acknowledge that and it maybe becomes some story in the media or whatnot like that, then you're going to get some cornball Negroes saying, oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I saw that on TV, oh, that's amazing. Oh, I got to find out more about that, even though they've been hearing and hearing and hearing. You see what I'm saying? But we, we don't really blame them for that. We, we don't really blame them for that because we understand that they are basically unregenerated. You understand? They need to be born again. And unless they really are born again, they won't be able to receive that. So we don't expect more from the lost sheep. We shouldn't expect more from the lost sheep than we, than we are getting, each of us one-on-one, -on -one, so forth and so on. But anyway, being that as it may, this is a very good book, and, and we hope to be able to go through um, a lecture utilizing Rudolph R. Windsor's book right here, um, The Valley of the Dry Bones, The Conditions That Face Black People in America. What, what is so interesting and relevant about this particular book, let's just, I'm just going to give you a little bit from the back of this so that you might understand why this book is important and, and get a copy of this book if you can. It says, um, The Valley of the Dry Bones, A Condition That Faced Black People in America by Rudolph R. Windsor is a fascinating compilation of history, anthropology, sociology, and theology. In clear, limpid prose, Windsor tells the history of the black people from biblical times until today. Drawing extensively upon the Bible and many works by eminent scholars in various disciplines, the author has created a work that is at once inspiring and intriguing. He seeks to prove that the black people, more properly called black Israelites, are truly God's chosen people and as such should become more aware of their unique heritage. The Valley of the Dry Bones represents a first step in this admirable endeavor. Then it's explained in the second paragraph, it says, In the latter half of the book, Windsor moves from biblical times to the present. Not only does he delineate the problems blacks face, but he offers, also offers some solutions. Together with the lucid texts are illustrations that are both timely and relevant. Windsor, in addition to knowing his history, has a wealth of common sense that he shares with his readers. No dusty volume of willingly uh, forgotten data, The Valley of the Dry Bones, is a controversial and daring volume. That rare work of scholarship, a book that makes the lessons of history pertinent to the modern reader. The Valley of the Dry Bones offers its readers a glimpse into a field of research that indeed, indeed merits a great deal of attention and careful thought. This book is the key because the bad economics the downturn in economics and this economic crisis is the curse. This is, now, this is now the curse on the Gentiles. As we are coming into this prophetic end of the Gentiles' dominion, this is the curse on the Gentiles for enslaving God's people. This is the curse, this bad economics. So when you hear them talk about economics and what can be done, think about it for a moment, like we've said before and elsewhere. They promise so-called black people after emancipation, rah, 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 right? They, they promise them 40 acres and a mule. They, they, they made a lot. They promised reconstruction, and this book goes into what happened in reconstruction. The, the schemes and the games, and especially now that we have this, this, this group called the so-called Tea Party, and Tavis, and I think he had Van Jones on his show um, the other night, and I think um, 
uh, night or so before that, he had Maxine Waters, and he gave a very interesting commentary, Tavis Smiley, he gave a very interesting commentary to um, uh, President uh, Obama's speech uh, before, I think it was the Black Caucus, where in no uncertain terms, he basically told black folks who are complaining that, listen, Obama, um, you're the first African-American president, we African-Americans, we are getting hit by this double-digit unemployment. Um, Obama, come on, man, help us out. Do so. You're the president. And he basically, his response basically is, you know, just shut up, stop whining, stop complaining, get over it, blah, 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 blah right? But basically it's a disrespect. Tavis views this, Mr. Smiley views this as a disrespect, and, and, and many of us as well. Of course, some of us would say, well, <laughs> I mean, what did you expect? I mean, really? I mean, this is not being harsh, but let's just speak, speak the truth. You know what I'm saying? We call him black, African-American, you, you know, but if we look into his particular roots, we see something a little... Not just a little different, a lot different. I mean, this is what surprised me, and I was trying to warn um, both my particular constituents of um, Rastafari and the Rastafarian, or the Rastafarians. I was trying to warn them and some of the other black folks. I was trying to say, listen, um, great, I, I don't, let's put it, if we can put him in, okay, he, he gets in the office, but have all this, this hype over what he's going to do, it's just going to lead to a real, disappointment, uh, a, a real, a real diss when the proverbial political shit hits the fan, and it appears that the political shit is hitting the, 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 the fan right now, and we give thanks for ones like Tavis, at least, you know, um, who was on PBS, and you can go to his website at, um, pbs.org forward slash, I think, Tavis, and I think it was this, this week, this week, um, that it was the last week in September, if one is looking at this in the future and want to check it out, where he had Maxine Waters on, and he made the comments, and some very interesting comments, in fact, we're going to try to see if we can get some clips of that and, and, and share it with our people, because it is very, it is very timely. And there's a, a lot of, even even pointing out the boule, or he didn't say the boule, but he said the bourgeois. There's a lot of these bourgeois blacks that um, are trying to hold the line and shh, 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 don't say nothing. Come on, just shh. Almost like we're suffering, Obama, black men. You know, he gave this speech to black men when he was running, the same speech that I think uh, Jesse Jackson responded to. Jesse Jackson responded to, and Jesse Jackson said, um, you know, we should cut the, you know, cut the niggas nuts off or whatever like that. You remember that whole comment and everything? And everybody jumped on Jesse. Oh, Jesse, how could you say this? Oh, what kind of person is Jesse? Oh, blah, 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 blah. Jesse has the child of wedlock. Every, all type of stuff came out about Jesse Jackson. And I'm not really a big fan of Jesse Jackson. But now that we see what we're seeing, we, we have to think about this carefully. Wait. Obama gives his speech telling black men to man up, take care of our family, so forth and so on. Okay, true. A lot of us haven't. A lot of us should do more. And, of course, we as black men have to look at ourselves. But then we also have to look at the context of the reality that we're in. Now, some say, oh, you're just making an excuse. No, we're being real. The Jews, the European, Polish, and German Jews still, to this very day, talk about the Holocaust, talk about living in ghettos in Europe, talk about pogroms. They still talk about this stuff like it just happened yesterday. For, and for them, it, it did happen yesterday. Nobody tells a so-called European, Polish, or German Jew, shut up and get over the Holocaust. That was past. Get over being in ghettos and being persecuted and having your property confiscated and, and getting stigmatized and death camps and all these things that they claim, right, that they claim that they have gone through. But as soon as 
black people seek to engage slavery, you understand, and trace from even reconstruction. Okay, let's forget about, not forget about, we can't forget about it, but let us move a little past the slavery, the, the plantation slavery, and let's just look at the reconstruction. What happened in Reconstruction? And unfortunately, a lot of our very intelligent black folks cannot really um, give an analytical or a critical um, perspective or contextualization of the connection between so-called Reconstruction and, and post-emancipation, it's tracing it all the way to today. In fact, you know the Voting Rights Act? so-called 1960, this was first proposed and actually it had passed in certain legislators, so forth and so on, in America in 1860. So what King did in, in the whole civil rights movement in 1960, in a sense, was redundant because the white supremacists, and this is what it comes down to, it's about white supremacy. If one can't recognize, see, the, the whole, as, as, as uh, Francis Cress Welsing said, it's like unless one recognizes so-called and is able to face white supremacy, you see, everything in this modern um, times, these modern times we're living in, is connected with, biblically speaking, the Gentile world dominion, biblically speaking. Historically speaking, um, the Anglo-European, um, and putting it into kind of a, a more timely aspect that many of us might address it when we're reasoning with one another, we could call it white supremacy. In a, in a modern sense, white supremacy. That's what it is, it's white supremacy. And one can't even recognize it because the lost sheep are living and are willingly living in the image of the beast, in the image of the beast, because the white man's interaction with us, the so-called Anglo-European, the slave master and slave driver, was not humane. Now, people say, well, there were some who may have done good, John Brown, so forth, so on. Okay, these are exceptions to the rules, but the exception to the rule does not get rid of the rule. The exception to the rule actually verifies and affirms or confirms what the basic rule is. So, this downturn in the 